Test one, two. Testing, one, two. Testing, one, two. Testing, one, two. Good morning. Hello, ha, and all those other languages. Jennifer Marks must be going to speak this morning. You can see how prepared I am. Uh, I, I am Reverend Jean Holmes, Unsi Yuha Wuspe, which means some silly nonsense about knowledge. And I'm very honored to have the name. I'm just playing. I play a lot because I'm a rooster and I love being on stage, So I only, and I only do it at these places very often. So put up with my mania or not. <laughs> but anyway, we have a lady from this area, from this beautiful ranch that would like to say something to us, and I cannot find her. Those lights are totally blinding. I hope you all know why I'm squinting and going like this. And your name is? I am Maggie Kennedy. Welcome to Sunrise Ranch. We're really happy to he have you here. Um, I live and work here with about 70 other people. I've been here a year and a half. There's people that have been here um, for much longer, 50 years, 55 years. This place was founded by the Emissaries of Divine Light in 1945. It's an intentional community, 1945. I actually don't. Um, the Emissaries of Divine Light are a global spiritual organization the basic premise is honoring the universal being in yourself, in others, and in all of creation. This is also a 350-acre working ranch, so we raise grass-fed cattle and organic chickens. The hard-boiled eggs this morning were from our chickens. Um, it's also been an organic garden since the 1940s. This year we're putting in five new greenhouses, so we'll have 15,000 square feet of greenhouse space. We're really excited about that. That'll make us a lot more sustainable and able to grow our own food year round. The residents here and myself really want you to feel welcome. We're here to hold a loving container while you do your work this week. Uh, I guess it's only three days, but um, please let us know at the front desk if there's anything you need to make your stay more comfortable, and we'll try to accommodate you. So on to some logistical things. Some of you might be from out of state. This is high altitude. It's about a mile high. Um, you want to make sure you drink plenty of water and get some good rest. Uh, we sell little packets at the front desk called Acclimate that are supposed to help with altitude sickness. They have some minerals and vitamins in them. Only AT&T cell phones work here. So if you don't have AT&T, congratulations, you're off the grid for a couple of days. Uh, we do have phones all around the ranch. In accommodations building, there's phones in the hallway. And then right under this stairway outside this door, there's a phone that you're welcome to use. Just dial a 7 to get out. Long distance is free, so help yourself. It's just a 7, a 1, and then whatever number you need to call. Um, if there's any kind of emergency where you need an ambulance, just to be super clear, you would dial 7911. If there's any kind of issue when the front desk is closed, an urgent after hours issue, um, by all the phones there's a laminated card with an urgent after hours number on it. That's my cell phone. So you can call me if the office is closed and you need something. Mm. Please only have water in this meeting room. This floor is brand new and we're trying to take really good care of it. 
There's a canal road behind the property here that is not part of our property. There's very swift running water that goes underground. It's considered very dangerous to walk along that road. There are a lot of signs that promise imminent death if you fall in the water, so you can't miss it. Please don't walk on the canal road. We have a ton of really beautiful places to walk around the ranch up on Green Ridge. Um, Rim Rock is over on the pasture on the other side. Come to the front desk if you want a trail map. We'll talk to you about some great places to walk. Please be aware of wildlife. Um, and that's not just on walks, that's here on campus. I had bear tracks right outside my door two days ago. So he's been on campus here. It's an adolescent. Nothing to be super frightened of. Just keep your awareness up. We have two designated smoking areas. If you're a smoker, come and see us, and we'll let you know where those are. Just to give you an idea, it's behind the pavilion here. There's some, you'll see the chairs. And then over on the far side of the accommodations, uh, there's a playground and a picnic bench. I know that sounds weird, but yes, that is where the smoking area is. <laughs> some of you have roommates, so just to let you know, we do sell earplugs at the front desk. <laughs> I hear that they help. Um, and then there's fans in most of your closets. Uh, the white noise helps too. And on that note, uh, it is supposed to get really cold starting tonight. So if you're having trouble with the heat in your room, either it's too hot or too cold. Um, it's an old building with a lot of variations. A couple of things to try are um, a lot of the rooms have the, the heat along the walls. There's a knob at the end of one of those registers and a higher number would be warmer. A lower number would be colder. Some of the rooms don't have that, and they have thermostats on the wall, and you all know how to use those. If you have any trouble in your rooms, please come to us at the front desk, and we'll try to get you more comfortable. There's a hot tub and a dry sauna, which hopefully were pointed out when you checked in, for those of you that are staying the night. There are towels out there. You don't need to use your room towels. They're in the big plastic bins by the hot tub and the sauna. Um, and quiet hours start at 10.30 p.m. And we do have residents that live over in that building, so please try to honor the quiet times. Um, I think that's it, because you are not doing attunements, so just questions. Does anyone have any questions? No. Ooh, I see one. <laughs> They're very, very cheap. I think they're 25 cents. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Yes. Ah, yes. You can go thank them yourselves, too. If you take a little walk to the garden, you can see the greenhouses that are going up, and the chickens are over there pecking away at the leaves. I like to visit them. Anything else? All right. Have a, I hope you have a really beautiful couple of days. <coughs> Welcome again. This has been a wonderful place to be, and we haven't even been here very long. I, I want to thank their staff personally because they worked out an issue for me yesterday with the most grace, and I'm very, very grateful. Uh, in just a minute, we're going to have our opening ceremony. Uh, and I know you think that drumming was it, but it isn't. Um, as you, what we usually do is we have all the speakers stand up at the front, and everybody else forms a line and shakes hands with the speakers. But there's a tradition where somebody has to be the whip to get them moving, and I'm usually stuck with that. <laughs> so I have requested that you don't do that this time, that you send them your love and a handshake from afar and appreciate them and all that and talk to them later in the hall for 20 minutes if that's what you want to do and they have time. But it's really, really awkward when we spend an hour on live streaming watching everybody shake everybody else's hands and talk for 20 minutes. So, and that's not the way it's supposed to go. Are we, we, are we truly doing that, right? Elk, you weren't kidding. See, he, he works with Hayoka medicine, which is the clown medicine. So he kind of sometimes says things backwards uh, to what we expect to hear. Like, no, I wouldn't like that steak for dinner when he's sitting there biting on it. <laughs> but so you do have to be aware that we are playful people and that the star people are all playful and they're all here. I don't know if you all saw those three on the way from Denver all the way up here that hung out all day. They were marvelous. We have what we called an armada, was told to me, uh, of beings keeping us company at this particular event. And our elk people are 
what uh, elk golden light eagle originally was was standing elk only when i was calling him that instead of leaping elk or sitting elk or walking elk or i used to love to i haven't figured out a good way to tease him about being a golden light eagle because i'm not one <laughs> so anyway elk carry love medicine for those of you who do not know and the crow people and raven carry the medicine of love to people to mankind so kind of surprised we haven't seen a whole lot of crows yet but we have a lot of predators around here too so that's kind of fun watching now I would like to personally thank Golden Light Eagle for sponsoring this again and bringing it to us. And I would like to thank Lily Carroll, who's just upstairs, and this lovely lady, Deborah, who's walking in the door, who assisted her, and Jen, wherever Jen is. Where is Jen? They're the three people oh, who put this together for us in such a short order and in such a gracious way. And 1111 is important. Kelly, where's Kelly? Oh, hi, Kelly. There you are. I have a glare right here, so if you see me going like this, you'll know why. Only, where's live stream? Because I've got to talk to them, too. Where's, are they on yet? They're on? Okay, hi, live stream. You're back there with Eagle. He's right behind you, but you can't see him. Um, it's, it's such a privilege for everyone to be here. We have such great speakers from all over the world and guests from all over the world because we're all one. And that was what was decided at, at, at the 12-12 in Carefree, Arizona last year. I think that was 12-12-12. That was two years ago now. Oh, boy, time flies. And um, so the whole theme that comes out of these, we usually do not start with a solid theme intention. It ends up showing itself through all the speakers talking about the same sort of energy. And so then we synopsize what it was. And I'd like to thank Matt back here with the hat, Matt Harmon, because he's going to MC for me in the afternoons. The old body needs a little rest so of mine, not his. Um, so I appreciate that stand-in. And Marilee Clark, if she's not here yet, will also be another one of our MCs who's always available to help. So without any more babbling, I would like to know how Elk would, Eagle would like to start this. See, unfortunately, even on my phone, he's Eagle Elk, so I have a problem with that. <laughs> he doesn't. He's a good man. You see that beautiful blue shirt he's wearing? That is the one of three replicas ever made of the original shirt that Red Cloud allowed all the other chiefs to wear in ceremony speaking to the federal government years and years back when he was trying to get the reservations and lands for the sacred natives that, were, that are there. So this is a great honor to see this on my brother, and, and Red Cloud is quite pleased. He says, you carry it well. And so, without ado. <laughs> I want to thank my sister. You know, I call her the grandmother of star knowledge. And this Jean Holmes, if you haven't met her, maybe you all have in, in other ways. So at this time, I want to thank you for, you know, being there for, for everyone as well. So at this time, um, where Spirit brought us here because, you know, we have work to do. And one of these, one of the parts of remembrances is, has been brought up a lot this last, this, la this past year. We're going through so much memory of the past. But at this time, since we're, we want to start the program, uh, I want to ask my brother here to come up and share with us his dream. You know, he come all the way from uh, Arizona. His dream, his feeling, his the spirit of his land has brought him here to us to help us with his this way of heart. So, I want to ask him to open this up with the prayer, with the song, and with the message. This gesture of standing isn't necessarily for the individual that is physically present, but the symbolic nature of that silhouette of ancestry, tradition, culture. In doing so, you also honor your bloodline, your heritage, your ancestors. There is to be joy in the times and the lands now. Embrace this as you sit back down.
the ways in which the prayers are brought forth now, like all of life right at this moment, is also evolving. In the traditions, it was ceremonial posturing, certain positionings that allowed for you to become that conduit to this divine creator source. This we have distanced from. Therefore, in the times now, we are asked to be able to bring it forth in ways that we, as that walker of this earthly walk, can resonate with. This is the style of prayer. My speaking to you with the essence of the divine coming through. You with your divine opening the door. The way in which the messages are to come are for you to listen to that dream vision. That dream vision has been there for all of you. Make the time to embrace that. However, don't become so fixated on it that you spend time that takes you away from this physical, human, earthly walk. A dear, dear friend of mine, spiritual as he was, began to listen to the dreams. But in dreaming, he would wake up immediately, get the journal out, and write. Dream, write, dream, write. In the mornings when he woke, his body was exhausted. In time, his body deteriorated. He lost his job. He moved back on to the land with his grandmother but kept listening to the dreams, but kept writing. This took away from his ability as an earthly walker. The divine has said, listen to my dreams, but listen to it in the time that we've got the conversation. In the day, take the day to walk it, embody it. We have many walls in our spiritual persona that we have to begin to start opening up the dear friend of mine because of that exhaustion crossed over so you've got to be very careful not to completely embrace the essence you are still responsible as an earthly physical being you must walk amongst them those are the dreams that are coming through but the dreams that were foremost, and that is to be shared this morning in this prayerful speak, is the fact that we are a universal family, cosmic family. And we have to be able to speak in ways that will awaken all. My elder councils internationally the ones in Colombia, in the Andes, refer to themselves as elder brothers. They refer to everyone in the north and all of the Mother Earth as younger brothers. And their walk in this life is to be able to hear the voices and the teachings from the divine and share that to younger brother. I've been called to be in council with them, but unlike the rest of the two legeds globally, they don't necessarily speak like we do. It is all telepathic. But the beauty of that, when we as ceremonial entities were in their villages in Colombia, they allowed for us to stay in the great chief huts as we slept these elder brothers from all the mountain tribes would gather just like the Elks did last night. They counseled all night long. And in the morning when we arose, we were required to step into the ceremonial arena in full spiritual essence, being physically, mentally, spiritually. And they watched 
every individual that was re representing the four winds of the Mother Earth. And their sharing was powerful. So what was sealed as of last night, to hear the songs of the Elks and to hear their counsel last night was breathtaking. At first light to walk out there and stand before them and have them become silent and allow for you to sing songs to them. And once you finish, then they would move. It is a great affirmation for all of you that is gathering here. I see the light, the purpose, the reason, the beauty within every single one of you. The divine has said so. The beauty of this prayer is for you to resonate, awaken, and allow for the essence of the physical body to walk, talk, breathe, sing, and dance that for the remainder of your earthly walk. It is in our ways of the Southwest that the essence of the winged ones allow for us to ascend to a point that is not earth, not with spirit, but in the intermediate area. To be able to be taken into the heights so we can have conversation with the divine. And the essence of the winged ones allow for us to see from above to know what it is that we must do. The essence is to be awoken within each one of you today, divine creator source. We call upon you, the beauty, the love, the smiles, and let the hearts awaken to the youth, the child, and bless those, and thank you, thank you, creator source, that I see the young that are present here, the young adolescents that are here. Take and embrace all that you see and allow for it to be taken out there for the ultimate theme of this time is you must walk amongst them. Bagyove, Bam Uka, Bam of Soka, Bam Uka, Ninu Paka Babok, Inyab, Satul, Kawev, Matav, Matanya Chitichu, Miaka Taltilov, Yap Mata, the A, Mauk, Bam of So, Ufma, 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 Ufma. Blessings. Bless you, my brother. <laughs> heart, heart. I love that man. James Uquala, big hand, please. Isn't this a great way to start a holiday? And they call this Veterans Day holiday, too. Isn't that interesting? There's a veteran. This man has walked through all kinds of realities this lifetime and does it with such grace and joy. He's an example to everyone, as is our brother here, who's always always available when he's needed probably too often actually because i harp on him all the time about taking better care of himself but i figure as i've lived this many years I, i've got the right to pick on a little brother if i want to <laughs> so without any further picking on <laughs> sweet brother this morning i come down to the driveway here and there was a lady that was wanting to go visit with the elk now you know why they weren't there. Brother Yukwala sent them home <laughs> early. <laughs> so we have a inf great influence here, a love influence called the Hechaka Oyate. And it's really prominent, but all night you could hear the singing, you could hear the bugling. And my companion, she woke up and she grabbed me, she said, what is that? City girl. Yeah, city. city. <laughs> so I was just teasing. So the Alk people, their influence is very strong. And we, all the nations on Mother Earth, whether they're four leg, two legs, or if they're flying or swimming, crawling, uh, all the plants, trees, they all talk. And they're all messengers, they're all helpers of, of for us. As, and we could get so much divinity, as you call it, and so much sacredness from them when we listen with our hearts. Uh, they have many languages, and they have many messages. And they're the product and the consciousness of what we call God. 
We can't live without them, especially the trees. So at this time, we want to honor the influence that's here on this land, and that's the elk people. And their message is very direct and very much to the point. So we want you to close your eyes, and we're going to honor them through a song, through a message for this conference and for this gathering, for this ceremony, and for your heart. Wao ka we wa u e Wao ka we wa u e Wao ka we wa u e Ai 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 Di wa e tan ka chao mi chi le Oh wao ka we wa u e lo we Oh oh we ke Hey, <laughs> The Elk Nations is very direct and to the point. The Elk Nation stands in the truth. The Elk Nation wants you to remember to see purity in all things. The Elk Nation stands in the truth that human beings, two legs, must walk in gentle strength. The Elk Nation stands in the truth. Always speak from your heart, especially in heart matters. The Elk Nation stands in the truth. Know that you're a servant. You are a guardian to this way we call Mother Earth and all things be direct and to the point. So at this time, I thank you for the listening to the message, to the song, to your heart. And this man next to me is this chief brother of mine. His name is uh, Blue Star, and the Eagles gave him that name. So when you hear this name, Blue Star, and there's a name after it, that's the nation that had honored him in that way. So with the ways of blue, as you know, uh, the energy and the ray, you understand what blue represents, the energy of blue. So this man... We chach pe tro wambli itrancha. Oh, Ihani washte. Good morning. You can uh, have a seat. I'm <coughs> like to welcome everybody to the uh, conference here, the ceremony. We call it ceremony. It's not a conference. We come to share our hearts, share our teachings, and uh, all of the uh, ancestral um, messages that come from the past to the present for us to carry into the future. So at this time, you know, I want to thank the drum for coming. We were um, talking about that with my wife and I coming up here, and I, we, said, we hope the drum's going to be there because it wouldn't be a ceremony without this drum, this heartbeat that uh, connects us, not just to Mother Earth, but also to the thunders of the universe out there. And so when creation happens, there's this big clap of thunder, boom. And we try to emulate that with the honorary beats of this drum to bring that into this room to bring that into your heart. So the ceremony we're going to be doing here, these uh, 
next few days is, is about that. It's about bringing all of this energy from the heavens and the earth into your heart. This is the ceremony of the heart, the remembrance of who we are, from where we came, where we are, and where we're going to go to in here. And because the whole universe can fit in there, in your heart, you have to believe that. So <clears throat> I want to say Nape Chayuzapo, no, um, to greet you all with a heart, hearty handshake and uh, welcome you at this time that uh, we have. It's a very special time, and my uh, my brother mentioned my name in a blue star, which Hakbeto has to do with the coming of prophecy, those things that are coming to pass, and. Uh, it's said that when the blue star begins to show itself and then be appear all over the planet to put its seed where it needs to be, that's the message for us to step up to our sacred responsibilities and to try to fulfill them as best we can, to follow our hearts and to follow our intuitions, and these uh, what they call spiritual nudgings, these little things within us that we uh, we feel and we know, but sometimes we just don't listen to it. You know, we listen to our head instead, and then we end up saying, "I knew it. I should have did that." You know, and uh, so it's as simple as that. You know, I uh, I know when ceremony is going on. I know when you're praying because I can hear your songs in my head. I can feel you. And I know, and I always tell my wife, somebody's praying. Somebody's in ceremony. Somebody's over here, over there. So I can hear these songs, you know, that people are doing what they're supposed to be doing. I have those senses, and so I um, am able to connect with you and feel good about that, feel happy that uh, we are doing the work. So um, thank yourselves for that, you know. There's nothing wrong with thanking yourself and appreciating yourself for who you are and the things that you came here to, into this world with, these special gifts. So this ceremony is about that, about bringing all of those gifts out so that we can um, all take part in the ceremony on Mother Earth to fulfill um, these responsibilities, the sacredness, to envelop her with this blanket of love. So when the snow falls and the rains fall and it covers the earth. Know that that's the blessing. That is a blessing. You don't say, oh, it's cold, you know. <laughs> that too, but it's still, it's purifying, you know. It's all about purity in here and in here. So the ceremony is about finding our purity, finding our heart, finding our spirit, connecting with those things that we might have pushed down somewhere inside of us, might have put them over here or over here, but we got to bring them up. We have to pull them out. And we have to use them. So with that, I want to thank you, welcome you to this uh, ceremony of remembrance. How many talk you ask? So at this time, we also want to recognize our elders and one of our elders that's here with us is travels all over the world and does ceremony, works with the energies of the earth, the land, the people. And I want to ask her to come up and uh, give a, her blessing as well. Uh, Miss Barbara Wolf, are you in the area? Uh, she's kind of small, you can't see her. Oh, there she is. <laughs> okay, could you stand for her, please? <laughs> Well, I can't see you because of the light, so that's good. This morning, when I came into this building here, there was this big book. Okay, there, how's that? Can you hear me? This morning when I came in into this building, there was this big book about ancient whatever. And I said, what is this? And I'm looking, I'm opening it, and I said, oh, my God, there's the, what's sitting in my 
my living room is the figure of this Chinese uh, lord who was killed at the same time as the um, the emperor. And, and then I have to wear my husband's hat, his beret. I met him in Paris. That's where I met my husband many, many years ago. But he and I had been married before many times. He was the emperor in China. So then I said, what is this all about? And then here's the sun. Silver Star and I were at Teotihuacan where we honored the sun. Do you remember that, Silver Star? She's not there, never mind. Yes. <laughs> So here is the sun. What is this? Finally, the higher will said, you're honoring the past that is good to come to the future. All that, you know, I, I don't know I, what he tells about me, but I have to get rid of all this negative stuff and so that only the good of the past is going to go forward to the future. And so they said, we want these things of today that you are looking at to be part of this ceremony today. So all of a sudden he asked me to talk. I don't expect it. I've said it. So there, guys, I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How much time we got? Okay, we're going to take about a 10-minute break. And But before we do that, we want to say thank you for following your heart and we have some things that we got to create, and they're called miracles during these next three days. We're all family under the laws of attraction. As we've always been told, we work with the 11th, 12th, 13th dimensional areas, okay? You're all teachers, you're masters, and you're healers. And the Spirit put us all together for a reason, and it's called remembrance. Thank you. And there's a couple of little notes of propriety. When an elder comes to speak or anyone else, it's, it's courteous if you stand up to acknowledge that they're here. If you're standing up and other people are sitting down during whatever's going on other than prayers, because we always stand for those, and these songs are prayers, uh, it would be very nice if you were careful not to block the person behind you so they can see, be very courteous of one another, which I've noticed you all are incredibly doing well. And the other thing is you see these absolutely incredible eagle bonnets these beautiful men are wearing and these wonderful regalia. Please don't hug these men. I know it's all you can do because I hug them, but <laughs> it's just because I intrude. And so, it's, it's, so I don't get enough of their hugs because they're all family to me for 30 years now. And it's very, very important that you not mess up. And this sounds practical, but that's what it is. You give them a big old hug and here goes a couple of feathers. And those were put in there with great sacred work. So just give them an acknowledgement of however they will. You personally, I'm sure they're great at holding hands by now. I was told we need to do fist bumps in the line this morning. <laughs> and I thought, wait a minute, some people may be feeling aggressive. <laughs> it might not be a good idea. So please take your break and come back in in a wonderful, respectful manner that you always hold. So thank you very much. And thank, this literally is, we call our aunties aunties and we call our brothers and sisters our brothers and sisters. But these technically are physical brothers. <laughs> they are in the same family as brothers. So that makes it even super special. So thank you and have a wonderful break and come back in 10 minutes, not 35. <laughs> Thank you. I've got a quick request of everybody.